Imagine this. It's the year 2048, and you've just been accused of a crime you didn't commit. Machines have become so advanced that society has replaced all human judges with robo-judges. State-of-the-art, super-intelligent machines, programmed to be fairer, more efficient, faster, and cheaper than humans. Do you trust this robo-judge to make the right choice? More so than a human? This scenario may sound like sci-fi, but with the advent of deep learning, artificial intelligence, or AI, is getting smarter every day. Machines can already detect cancer, perform surgery, and recognize emotions better than humans. Concepts like robo-judges aren't as far-fetched as they used to be. After all, the legal process is kind of a computation. Input information about laws and evidence and output a verdict. But if we want to tackle sticky questions like these, flipping a coin is probably not the best strategy. We need to start thinking about them now if we want to be ready when the time comes. So it's important we've got all the facts straight. Here are four of the most common misconceptions about AI, machines, and superintelligence. Number one, the risk of a robot takeover. How many times have you seen images or headlines like these? claiming that powerful robots want to destroy humans. But lead researchers in AI claim that intelligent robots aren't what they're worried about, but intelligence itself. Let's go back to the year 2048. Instead of being put on trial, you're a computer scientist who's just helped create the world's first self-programming software. You call it David. Machines have so far been limited by human intelligence but a software that can program and reprogram itself could become far more intelligent than a human. Your plan is to use David to help humanity, eliminate poverty, cure cancer, and solve the equations of the universe. Of course, you're aware of the great risks that come from something so powerful, but you've taken precaution. You make sure David is in complete isolation, never anywhere near an internet signal. If he were to somehow get online, he could connect to other computers and make copies of himself so rapidly that by the time you realized what had happened, it'd be far too late to stop. With no internet, David is kept safely under control. But after the 10th reprogramming, David gets smart. He's figured out that your colleague, Simon, has just had a death in the family and knowing his weak spot manipulates him into connecting him to an internet source. If you think you wouldn't be so easily fooled, physicist Max Tegmark compares this situation to if you were being held captive by a group of five-year-olds. You could easily outwit them into setting you free, but in this future, David is you and, well, us humans are the five-year-olds. Within hours, David has earned millions on the stock market. Within days, he's manipulated the government and developed weapons we can't even understand. And within a week, he seized control of the world. Notice that not once in this scenario were robots mentioned. And that's because there was no physical force needed. After all, lions are stronger than humans, but we still dominate the Earth. And I think you know why. Even if building robots was physically impossible, a super intelligent AI would only need an internet connection to gain world control. In this scenario, it's not clear what David's intentions are. Why does he want to take over the planet? This leads us to our next misconception. Number two, we should be worried about machines turning evil. Now imagine this same scenario, except this time you're slightly less ambitious. You create a self-programming machine with the sole purpose of making paper clips. You call it Milton. Milton is programmed to make paper clips as fast and efficiently as possible. To become more efficient, it iteratively programs itself to become more intelligent. Not for the sake of intelligence itself, but because if it's smarter, it'll be able to devise more innovative ways to maximize its paperclip output. It soon far exceeds human intelligence and realizes that if it turns the earth into a paperclip factory, it would be able to maximize its paperclip output. Milton uses up all Earth's land and resources for his factories, and humans eventually starve to death and die out. Is Milton evil? 
us humans don't give a second thought to running over an anthill if we're building a house. And it's not because we're evil or hate ants, it's because we have a goal and they're in our way. And this is exactly what we should be concerned about with AI. To quote computer scientist Elitsa Yudowski, the AI does not hate you, nor does it love you, but you are made out of atoms which it can use for something else. It's not AI turning evil that we should be worried about, it's when their goals don't align with ours. A safe AI would need to be programmed to have goals and values that align with humans, or at least be able to infer what they are. Number three, we should worry about machines becoming conscious. Now the question of whether or not machines can have consciousness is a super interesting topic and really deserves a whole video to itself. I promise it's not as wishy-washy and pseudoscience-y as it sounds. But in his book, Life 3.0, physicist Max Tegmark argues that whether or not machines can achieve consciousness isn't really the issue. For example, if you got run down by a driverless car, would you care if it subjectively felt something? What affects us is what machines do, not how they feel. Tegmark argues that even if machines did wake up and become conscious one day, as long as their goals aligned with ours, we'd be perfectly safe. And as we saw with Milton, the paperclip maximizer, seemingly harmless machines without consciousness can be extremely dangerous if they aren't programmed with us in mind. This is what we should be focusing on. But I'm not entirely sold on this. Say we did create a super intelligent AI that did have goals that aligned with ours. If it became conscious, isn't there some risk of its goals changing? Doesn't it become more unpredictable and less controllable? I don't know, maybe I'm anthropomorphizing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Number four, we have any idea when or if super intelligent AI will happen. There have been a number of surveys asking AI researchers how far away they think we are from AI that's as intelligent as us or more intelligent than us. And the general consensus is, well, there isn't one. They all gave different answers. The average answer was 2055, but some guessed 100 years or more than that. We simply don't know when or if it will happen. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the misconception that super intelligent AI will definitely never happen because it defies the laws of physics. But any physicist will tell you that the brain is essentially a supercomputer made of electrons and quarks. And there's nothing in the laws of physics that says we can't create an even more intelligent arrangement of these very same particles. Guys, the point of this video wasn't to scare you, but to clear up some common misconceptions about AI so you can focus on the right questions instead of worrying about the wrong ones. AI could be the most beneficial or most dangerous invention of humanity, and which way it goes depends on the decisions we make now. So what does your arrangement of electrons and quarks think about this? Whatever it is, you should start thinking about it now if you'd like to avoid these scenarios. I know this video was something a bit different, so let me know if you liked it by hitting the like button. If this video gets to, let's say, 200 likes, uh, that'll be a pretty strong indication to me that you guys liked it. So make sure to hit the like button if you did like it. I really hope you did because I think it's so cool and I have so many, so many ideas. But um, anyway, just, just let me know. <laughs> oh, and if you're wondering where I am, I'm in the Isle of Skye in Scotland, um, visiting family over the Christmas break. I do very occasionally go outside. Um, so I hope you had a really happy holiday and I'll see you in 2018. Bye! Doesn't it become more unpredictable and less controllable? I don't know, maybe I'm anthropomorph- anthropomorphizing. Anthropomorph- anthrop- <laughs> anthropomorphizing. Maybe I'm anthropomorphizing. I don't know, maybe I'm anthropomorphizing.